Hello out there, and today we have an installment of the series that I like to call Classics Uncovered, where I take an old, discontinued, possibly forgotten model and bring it back into the spotlight to give it a little bit of recognition and make sure that time doesn't pass it by. And today we have the Benchmade 705, and this is a classic Benchmade, one that I really like a lot and um, I've wanted for a long time, and then a buddy of mine was nice enough to send it my way. And this knife is the, the smaller brother to the Benchmade 710, which was the first ever Axis Lock knife. And uh, it is the predecessor to the 707 sequel. So the 705 came out, then it was discontinued. The 707 came out, that has since been discontinued as well. And so this McHenry and Williams design is sort of sort of gone by the wayside. And yeah, I just wanted to bring it uh, back and and show you guys and and give you a little bit of information about it. And yeah, maybe if it's something that you're interested in, you'll you'll look into tracking one of these down because it actually isn't that hard compared to some of the other knives that are out there. And we'll talk about that in just a bit. So getting into some of the details and some of the size comparisons to maybe some other similar Benchmades, this was, you know, a smaller type EDC, a little less than three inches cutting edge overall. You can see the overall length is like just shy of seven inches. It's about six and three quarters total inches. So, you know, it does have a decent size to it, but, but nothing too hefty at all. Bringing in the mini griptilium, which is a very good comparison here. You can see that the overall lengths are pretty close to identical. The cutting edges are pretty similar as well. All right, and then here's an old Osborne. And this is gonna be a really good comparison, actually. This is the 770. And while these are somewhat similar sized, uh, the, the philosophy behind using these two knives would be very different. You know, this is a little bit more of a gent piece up here. And the 705, at least in my estimation, and you can see actually how thick the liners are and that it's not like the thinnest knife. It's actually a pretty darn sturdy knife for a small EDC. So it definitely had that going for it. And then the last comparison I'll do is the one that is probably the most significant. And this is the 707 sequel. Um, don't adjust your eyes. This is a weird sequel. It's been modified and customized in a few different ways. And we're going to talk a lot about the differences between these two knives because the designs are very, very similar. Obviously, with the designation of 705 and 707, there's going to be a lot of similarities there. All right, but the 705, one thing that I really like about it is that it does have the same kind of like scale pattern and look as the 710. So there was a lot of continuity there with that release. Um, this knife, I think it was originally released in ATS 34, but now it is in 154 CM, at least this one is. There are a number of other um, limited editions and things that we'll talk about as well. All right, the G10 on this, if you're familiar with Benchmade's uh, like classic G10, it's not... It definitely doesn't feel like a modern G10. You know, when you feel it, you'll feel that it's like a little bit slicker. It's almost like decent traction, but polished as well. So it does have a, a, an odd and, and again, dated, I guess is a good word, a dated feel to it. But, you know, it is, it is pretty darn neat and it is ergonomic just in that, you know, as long as you don't have massive hands, you're going to be able to get about three to four fingers, maybe that fourth finger hanging off the end. And then this ramp really tells you exactly where your thumb's supposed to go. Nice little choke up, no sharpness here. So this is pretty comfortable as well. Right, when we're talking about the blade shape, and I think when the 705 got discontinued and they brought out the 707, that was the big difference. You know, maybe materials and everything, sure. But if you look at the, the shapes of these two handles, they're almost identical. They're pretty much the same thing here, right? The difference though is the broadness of the blade. So um, the 705 has a little bit more like refined, uh, shorter in terms of height and sort of more of a stabby looking uh, a blade to it while the 707 is just a little bit more broad and robust. And I, it's weird, it's one of those things and, and I'm sure you guys can understand, whichever one of these I have in my hand, I prefer over the other. <laughs> So they're both really good. Uh, honestly, I, I think that it would have been interesting if they would have released like these two variations maybe at the same time and seen what the what the market really uh, dictated was more popular because both of these knives, um, you know, they have good looking blades. But I don't know, I think and especially you can take a look at how far down the blade goes here as far as like 
where your hand is almost getting to a negative blade angle. I think the 707, just in terms of cutting performance and usability, in my estimation, and just from the way that blade looks, I think it's more all purpose than the 705. But the 705 does have that G10, and it does feel, at least in my estimation, to be a little bit of a stronger knife with thicker liners as well. So, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty interesting debate. <clears throat> Excuse me. Pretty interesting debate to see what people would prefer one over the other. But yeah, we do have a pretty good blade, thumb stud action, good thick liners. We have a two position reversible pocket clip. It is tip down only. It's not deep carry, but it is a Benchmade clip. So you could put any of those newer deep carry clips on it and um, and it would be just fine. It did come with a Benchmade USA clip, which is the coolest clip on the planet. So I definitely like that. One thing I want to make note of, and it's something that I've commented on a lot, is Benchmade's fit and finish. Benchmade's fit and finish historically, and, and I'm sure if you're a Benchmade person or if you've read anything about Benchmade, they take a lot of shit about just their fit and finish not being good, their centering not being good, issues from the factory, their QC isn't top notch, yada yada. Um, but I've seen with a lot of their like classic knives is that, you know, that, that can be the case to a little bit more of a degree than some of the other companies that I buy from. That said, I've handled a few of these and every one of them has been pretty much perfect. Now, I don't know if this knife has been disassembled over the course of its lifetime, if it's been, anything's been replaced, but the action on this knife, I mean, this is coming from, this knife is probably between 15 and 20 years old at this point. The action on this is fantastic. I mean, it is fantastic. So whatever they did, <laughs> they did it right, you know, and it's dialed in. It's pretty much perfect. It feels as good as the modern day Benchmades. And, and you know, I've said quite a few times that Benchmade has taken it to the next level with the way that their knives are, um, their action is out of box. It's just really improved over the past few years. But this is as good as almost anything that I've had recently. So yeah, really, really good job. And it's a cool knife. And so basically, guys, I just wanted to, to share it with you, get it some time on camera, let you get a look at it. Now let's talk just before we go about availability and what the price range is going to be for these things. Well, the fun aspect of this is that there are some limited editions. There's limited editions in D2 with some inlays, different color scales, that sort of thing. You know, just the typical kinds of limited edition runs that you would expect. Now those, just because they are so limited, those go for a good amount of money. I'm talking like $250, $300 is what people ask for them, right? And if you're looking at the 707 sequel, even the base 707s nowadays are going for a lot more than they used to. I mean, I think they sold around like $100, $110 while they were in production. And since then, it's like over $150, close to $200 is what people are asking for because you just can't find them. And then the limited edition 707s, I mean, I see 300, 350. Again, that's what I see them listed at. I don't know if people are actually buying them at that price, but people are asking for a lot and there's just not a lot to go around. So if you want one, you're probably going to pay for it. The good news is that the 705s themselves, just the regular runs like this, really aren't that expensive. And if you keep an eye on eBay, you keep an eye on some of the forums, people are trying to get rid of them. A lot of times the people who are looking for these are looking for the more exclusive ones. And so it might be hard to find a taker at a high price. You might be able to get these a little bit cheaper than some of the other stuff, especially the ones with serrations like this. And honestly, what's interesting about that <laughs> is that on a lot of Benchmades, I just don't care for serrations, but with the classic stuff, I have no qualms whatsoever. I'll take serrations, I'll take uh, plain edge, whatever it is, I just want the discontinued model. <laughs> All right, so that's the look at it. That's the 705. It's a darn cool knife. It's a good EDC. It's one that I wanted to give a little bit of attention and, and hopefully spark a little bit of interest in from someone who is either a collector or just wants to find a good classic EDC that's gonna last them, you know, that's gonna last me enough. Another 20 years so could last a lifetime all right thanks for watching guys take care and have a good one